I think we just witnessed the power of prayer. So I want to give Jesus Christ thanks for giving us this election. And you know it was Jesus is the only reason that Trump won because there is no way Trump should have won, especially when he had all those voting machines that were rigged against him. I mean, people was selecting Trump's name and then the, the thing was going over to Hillary and stuff like that. And it was happening widespread. So all the praise and all, all the glory goes to Jesus on that. So thank you, Lord, for giving us the election. So that just... That just let you know right there that anything, anything is possible with prayer and just shows you the power of prayer and faith and, and that the fact that prayer can change things. Prayer can, God can actually intervene on our, on our behalf when we pray together. Not just one person praying here and there, but everybody praying together collectively touches the heartstrings of God and he reacts because if the Christian pray the Christians get together and pray instead of fighting each other God can move on our behalf but I want to tell you the battle for Trump is far from over the battle has just begun because Trump is is entering the most dangerous phase of his life because the globalists new world order the crime syndicate they are they want to assassinate him at all costs I mean, they're just thinking of millions of ways that they could take them out. There are even some prophecies that's warning about that. So don't think it's over and don't slack up on the prayers. Keep the, keep the prayers going and, and, and ramp them up. Ramp up the prayers more, more powerful than ever. Fast and pray. Because every day of his administration or however long it goes, he's going to need prayer for protection every single day for him and for his family and for his team and I'll even say pray for Putin as well because Putin wants peace he don't want World War 3 and he wants to work together with Trump that'll be two superpowers against the new world order new world order terrorists that the anti anti human new world order who pretty much want to exterminate most of the population of the earth so they can re repopulate it with their own bloodlines a very satanic selfish self-serving group and this group is just through the media just dumbed down most of the population most of the population have no clue to what's going on it, the, the nation is pretty much hijacked by criminals self-serving criminals that care nothing about our country or the world for that matter so we need to pray like never before I know you hear me say this before but really now I mean really really need to dial in with the prayers yes we got the election and we're happy about that you know you get your little celebration and that's all good but understand the battle he the battle is just begun because they're gonna do anything possible to even stop him from getting inaugurated up up to starting a nuclear war with Russia because if they could get something big going like that even with these protests if people are being paid people are actually being paid to protest and to riot mostly riot protesting is fine but they're being paid to cause a lot of trouble because they're trying they're pulling out all the stops it's going crazy just to stop this man from taking office it really doesn't make any sense I mean it's like if we would have got Hillary in there, she already done said that if she even thinks Russia is hacking us, that she's going to use military force. They always using Russia to scare everybody as a scapegoat or a boogeyman. Oh, Hillary fell down today. Russia did it. Oh, Hillary sneezed and coughed. Russia did it. Oh, my private server got hacked. Russia did it. Nah, Russia didn't do it. You got patriots inside your own intelligence community that's fed up with your corruption and they leaked it to WikiLeaks to expose you. So it'd be insanity to have elected her in the first place. I mean, people are not thinking. People are not thinking clearly. Like, it's going to be bad with Trump. No, it's going to be. And you know, whatever you thought you was going to enjoy with Hillary Clinton, it, it was, it was going to be very short-lived because she would have launched a nuclear war. So you'd be celebrating under mushroom clouds in your city. So the best thing happened on our behalf God had mercy on us and listened to our prayers and now we got Trump. So we got to pray that he does the right thing in there by God, you know, and that, and that he restores the Christian postulates back to this republic. 
and sanity back to this republic. You know, people are, are worrying about things he said in the past and some of the things like that. Well, hey, guess what? Everybody has done bad things in the past and everybody needs forgiveness from Christ. So if we don't forgive people for their sins, guess what? God won't forgive your sins that you committed against his word. So people need to stop being hypocrites and forgive and move on. Forget about all this racism. People need to just stop looking at colors and just look at each other as human beings. You know what I mean? And just work together. So we can make it happen. But people, we need your prayers. All prayer warriors out there. Hey, the battle's far from over. We need we need your prayers. We need your fasting. And we need it to be non-stop. Because the globalists, the crime syndicates, the New World Order, all the evil people, all the Satanists, they're all united against Trump. And they're going full power. They want to assassinate them. And they want to stop them at all costs. So. Thank you for listening. And God bless you. And please get to praying. Oh yeah. One more thing prayer warriors almost forgot. And the prayer warriors know how important this is. Every area of that White House needs to be anointed with oil. And reclaimed for the kingdom of God. So someone needs to. Uh, that's on Trump's prayer team. Needs to get in touch with Trump. And let them know this. It must be done. Because we don't want those demonic influences still being around. So they need to go in there with the prayer team. Anoint every area. Uh, send forth the, the, angels, the angel, angels of God to reclaim every area of that White House for the kingdom of God. And then everything can run smooth like it's supposed to. Okay? Alright, see if we can't make that happen. Alright, prayer warriors. God bless y'all once again. Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got Michael Snyder on with me today. And you remember Michael. He worked as an attorney on the famous K Street in Washington, D.C. He's been writing articles and books for over five years. Matter of fact, written over 2,000 articles, probably more than that now, uh, about the coming economic collapse and the end of the American dream. His articles have been published and discussed on some of America's largest radio and TV programs. Written two books about the beginning of the end and get prepared. And a new one now on the rapture. I'll let you tell about that here in just a minute. And he came into Prophecy Club uh, a while back here, a year or so ago, and made a couple of DVDs. One is on the economic collapse, World War III and the death of America, and the regathering of the 10 lost tribes of Israel. We're going to make those available today, normally $30 each, both today for $30. Uh, so that's a great deal just because we're having him on. Anyway, Michael Snyder, welcome back to the Prophecy Club. Thank you for having me on, Stan. It's great to be with you. Okay, so we want to talk about this Trump election. I did a cartwheel, kind of hurt my left wrist a little bit, but at 63, I did a cartwheel. I was so happy. So what do you think of the Trump election? Well, I was very happy too, Stan. Like so many uh, Americans, so many patriotic Americans, I very much wanted to see Trump win. But in my case, I was actually more concerned about Hillary Clinton losing just for my own self-interest, among other reasons, that uh, I think we really dodged a bullet with Hillary Clinton. So when Donald Trump pulled off a miracle on election night, and, and that's what people are calling it. And in fact, ahead of time, I said, if Donald Trump wins, it's going to be the greatest miracle in American political history. Yep. And it, I believe it was a miracle. Yep. And Trump won. I voted for Trump. I was very, yep. very happy about that. But... Don, Donald Trump is not in yet. You know, everyone's celebrating, but we still have some hurdles to go over until we get there. Tell us about that. Well, first of all, it's not the American people that actually dir directly elect the president. Well, uh, because it's actually the electoral college that elects the president. And so the Electoral College is going to meet on December 19th. Now, they don't all gather in one place, but what they do is they go to all 50 state capitals where they meet, they gather together, and they cast their votes. Now, the vast majority of the time, the, uh, the electors in the Electoral College follow the will of the people. And they're actually, the electors were selected by each political party. They're supposed to be loyal to the political party. And so throughout our history, 99% of the time, they followed the will of the people. But there have been some instances where that has not happened. You know, for example, in the year 2000, there was a Democrat elector that didn't cast their vote, the, the, you know, in the correct manner. And then, and this time around, there was a Democrat elector that said ahead of time that, uh, that uh, he was not going to vote for Hillary Clinton, no matter what. 
So there are these faithless electors throughout history. Now they're pretty rare, but they, they you know, they have not voted according to the will of the people. So could this happen this time? Could this happen this time? Absolutely. You know, it, it, it's a possibility, uh, Stan, although the, the, the margin in the Electoral College is large enough that yes. that's probably not likely. I agree. Yes, but it's happen. a possibility. It's a possibility. So we got to talk about that. Now, maybe you don't know about this, but we had Matthew Wright come in. He made a double DVD set, and it's called Prophecy in the Bible Codes. Now, I read this the other day, but he found D. Trump, that's D. Dot Trump, in the Bible Codes. Now, running across where he found D. Trump, he found the word murdered. Next to that is president. Several places, United States. Three times he found murdered, is murdered, I was shot, assassin. So, now, we, we don't want to prophesy that's coming to pass, but we definitely want to remember to pray against that. But the point is, my understanding is, before Electoral College, which takes place on December 19th, before that, if something were to happen to Trump, it would default to Obama. But after the Electoral College, it would default to Pence. Point is, brothers and sisters, he's not in yet. Okay, and even when the Electoral College has elected him, we still have to actually get him inaugurated before he has taken time, uh, total charge. So remember him in your prayers. Matter of fact, I pray every day, Lord, protect Donald Trump, his family, his staff, get them in the White House for eight years, help him to supernaturally drain the swamp and kick out the spiders and snakes. Amen. Amen, Stan. And we need to remember, you know, the last time we had a situation like this would have been Ronald Reagan, where the establishment, the elite hated Reagan. Even the Republican establishment was very much against Reagan at the time. And uh, they they really pressured him to accept George Bush as his vice president. Then Reagan got in and he was even president for a little while. And then there was an assassination attempt and uh, the uh, assassin very much had links to the Bush family, if you study that. And it appeared to me to be an attempt by the elite to take Reagan out at that time. So even once Trump takes office, we still need to be praying for his safety. Amen. Now, assuming that he gets through the Electoral College, then he's going to be on track for Inauguration Day. Now, for Inauguration Day, we need to watch this, Stan, because the far left that, you know, we've already seen the protests, you know, in cities all over America, they've gotten violent. They've been chaotic, but the far left is planning the biggest one of all for January 20th for Inauguration Day. Yes. Um, and already there's Facebook pages set up. One of them is called Protest at the Inauguration, Stand Against Trump, War, Racism, and Inequality. And thousands and thousands of people have already committed to going uh, there and you know, and they're part of this quote, not my president movement. That that hashtag not my president's trending on Twitter and Facebook. And another hashtag disrupt J20 means disrupt January 20th, Washington, DC. What they want to do is they want to disrupt the inauguration ceremonies as much as they possibly can. Now they can't stop the inauguration, but they could force it indoors. They could, you know, be, because normally it's a big celebration, everyone's happy, everyone's having a good time. They want to turn it into a giant uh, protest, a giant uh, riot, you know, uh, a chaotic scene. They want to disrupt it as much as they possibly can. So anarchist groups, you've got the people who are involved in Ac Occupy Wall Street, Black Lives Matter, all of it, George Soros. They want to, you know, really push back hard against Donald Trump. And they're openly using the word revolution yes, to describe yes. what they want. Well, what about the riots in Washington, D.C.? Well, Stan, you know, I think people need to be very, very concerned because, uh, you know, uh, because what the men of God have prophesied in the past regarding this, for example, John Paul Jackson, who recently passed away, but, you know, he prophesied about this coming perfect storm. And part of that, in an update he did in 2012 about this, he specifically named Washington, D.C. about a place that where riots would come. And he was shown headlines from the Lord. Throughout the years, he would, he would sometimes get these headlines from the Lord. And one of the headlines was, quote, Washington, D.C. riots continue. Hmm. And so he saw specifically that there would be riots, but he specifically named Washington, D.C., which is exactly where the far left is planning 
um, um, these this riot for January 20th. And then, of course, if Trump takes office, we could see riots on a consistent basis there. But also Terry Bennett, who you've uh, talked about on the program before, right. talked about on DVD before. Well, Terry Bennett is is one of these watchmen that is he, he also has received headlines from the Lord. And in August 2010, he received uh, a couple headlines about this. He received one headline. Washington, D.C. shaken, rioting and looting continue. Uh, He also saw martial law declared in nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Another one, resignation fever hits Washington, D.C. You know, he saw martial law declared in other cities eventually, too. Some of the cities he saw, New York, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Miami, Chicago, and other U.S. cities. Um, and so we, we, we've got John Paul Jackson and Terry Bennett both agreeing, both prophesying well in advance that there are going to be riots in Washington. Well, now, let me also say, brothers and sisters, and, I, and there's a possibility that these could happen before Trump gets in. But. I don't want to dismiss the fact that once Trump gets in, it's going to be a peaceful sailing situation because, remember, Shane Warren saw people protesting, holding up signs saying, we want our entitlements. That's not something that would happen before Trump gets in. That's something that would happen after Trump gets in. Also, Terry Bennett said that I saw that welfare checks stop and the trouble ensued once the welfare checks stopped. That's not going to happen before Trump gets in. So many of these prophecies could very well be in the early throes of the Trump presidency. True? Oh, absolutely, Stan. Another headline, which Terry Bennett received on uh, December of 2011, quote, Washington, D.C. embroiled protesters unlimited. So that sounds like just a massive amount of protesters, similar to kind of what the far left is hoping for for January 20th. But so many of these prophecies, Stan, after Donald Trump got elected, I voted for him. I was very, very happy. Me too. the Lord started dealing with me uh, about, okay, where are we on the timeline? And it's and I, and I started understanding that so many of these prophecies we've been talking about, about the, the left protesting, getting upset, like you just mentioned, Shane Warren and others, they make a whole lot more sense if Donald Trump is president than if Barack right. Obama or Hillary Clinton right. is president. For example, going all the way back to Dimitri Dudeman where he prophesied, you know, that we're going to have an internal revolution started by the communists. Right. Now, that's the far left. That's the radical left. Well, why would they be starting the revolution if Barack Obama was president or if Hillary Clinton was president? But if Donald Trump is in the White House, that makes a whole lot more sense. Well, let me tie in on that. You remember what was said was the fall of America will start with an internal revolution started by the communists. Some of the people will start fighting against the government. The government will be busy with the internal problems. Then Russia attacks. Now, that's four points. The thing of it is, is for the first time, I think in my lifetime, we're actually seeing the R word, revolution, in the headlines. Okay, so now they're actually saying this is a revolution. That's big. We also know that this is started by George Soros, my opinion, a very big communist, and most of those subversive organizations that call themselves Progressive. Progressive is the new word for communism. So this is started by the communists. However, they are not fighting against the government yet. The government is not busy with internal problems yet. But two of the four points, internal revolution started by the communists, have it. Now, I don't think it's totally fulfilled, but it's certainly the spark that lights the fire. It certainly started. Absolutely, Stan. A lot of people were assuming if Trump got into office, that would put off judgment. But the the, the truth is, now that Trump is potentially going to become president, that could have moved things up even more into True. the present. You know, with in terms of revolution, Katy Perry, most of your listeners probably know who she is, one of the biggest pop stars in the world. She sent out a, a, a message on Twitter after the election. Qu- she said, quote, the revolution is is coming. Wow. And then Sarah Silverman, comedian Sarah Silverman, she's very, very popular as well. She's a radical leftist. But uh, she said on Twitter that she's calling for, quote, revolution in the streets. So this this, this, this is ter- a term that's being used by some of the biggest names on, on the left right now. Absolutely. Now, let me give you some prophecies that I think are, now they're bad prophecies, but they could very well be fulfilled before January 20th. 
The martial law could start. Obama could still stay in office. We've got two people saying that. We kind of discussed that. But then we've got some bad prophecies that might be fulfilled once he's in the office. The entitlements, welfare checks stopping. That's not going to happen before then. Uh, the New Republic. We haven't even talked about that. Daniel Davis said that he saw a new dollar bill coming out. Also, Bennett said he saw a new currency. Shane Warren said he saw a new currency. Daniel Davis said he saw the dollar dead. Shane Warren said he saw the dollar blowing in the wind. All of that is not going to happen before Trump gets in. That has to be a post-election, post-Trump getting in. Bennett said a new currency. Also, Bennett said, and I didn't say this directly, but indirectly, if you put together what he said, he said the seven-year tribulation is going to be from the years 2022 to 2028. That doesn't sound like everything is going to be hunky-dory between now and there. Also, several people, I can dig up the quotes, saw protesters burning the cities. Now, we haven't seen the burning of the cities yet, and that doesn't sound like that's going to happen before January 20th. So uh, what I'm saying is don't go to sleep. Don't stop praying. We got to pray that he actually is elected, that he actually gets in office January 20th. But then we got to pray that he has wisdom. And a lot of this civil war, and matter of fact, Terry, I'm reading this. Terry uh, Bennett said what the United States is going to go through is civil conflict, civil war, then invasion. And it sounds to me like what we're seeing is the beginning of it now. Yes, Dan. And if you look at the, the kind of at the prophecies from a wide view, we've got from so many men and women of God all over the world, uh, they, they're prophesying civil unrest coming to America, and they name specific cities. Now, in the inner cities, if you, you know, if you look at the election results, they're heavily, heavily Democratic, heavily, heavily leftist. And so the, the, uh, the, the civil unrest, the rioting is prophesied to happen in the areas that are very much Democratic, that are very much liberal, far left. That's where the civil unrest is going to erupt. That makes sense if Trump is in office. And then Trump, he's saying what? He's the law and order candidate candidate. He's going to, you know, he's going to restore order. So the response to that will be declaring martial law in these areas where the civil unrest is erupted, which is exactly what we see in the prophecies as well. So it makes so much sense with Trump being president with the fulfillment of these things that we're seeing. And now, you know, I believe with Donald Trump coming in that he has the uh, choice to be a good president or a bad president. Just because Christians voted him in doesn't mean he's going to be a good president. You just look at some of the past presidents, President George W. Bush and some of the others. You know, uh, so Donald Trump has a choice. Now, since, just since he was voted in, uh, Stan, I've been very disturbed by some of the things that he's done and said already, which I think, you know, once social conservatives hear about these things, they're going to be quite alarmed. Such as? Well, for example, he went on 60 Minutes the other night, and he was asked about uh, a gay marriage. And he was asked, you know, hey, you know, the, the gay and lesbian community, they're very concerned about what you're going to do. You know, are you going to try to overturn gay marriage? And, and, and this is what Donald Trump said, quote, it's irrelevant because it was already settled. It's law. It was settled in the Supreme Court. Then he went on to say, quote, these cases have gone to the Supreme Court. They've been settled, and I'm fine with that. So on the one hand, Donald Trump is saying, oh, I'm going to nominate pro-life justices to the Supreme Court. But on the other hand, Donald Trump is saying, hey, gay marriage is done. That battle is over. I'm not worried about it. I'm fine with it. In fact, I'm not even going to try to use the Supreme Court to overturn it. So basically, he's giving up on gay marriage, saying he doesn't even, it's not even something he's concerned about or wants to deal with or try to overturn even before he's become president. Well, and I'm, so me, I'm, that's a major concern. I'm also concerned about what he said about Ob Obamacare, because all the way through his campaign, he said, repeal and replace, repeal and re replace, but... In that same interview, when Leslie Stahl asked him, what are you going to do about Obamacare? Well, you know, there might be a room to keep a few things. All right. Well, if we're talking about some kind of limitation that would only take care of the people that have existing uh, conditions or those people that got to live with their parents that are 26, and that's the only thing in it, and he wants to bring in, how do I say, free enterprise. I want it to go back to free enterprise, a lot of competition, let has open competition across the borders of the states, then I'm fine with that. Yeah, I don't want to have any part of either one of them, but in other words, I, I guess I'm, 
it's very, very important to me that he does what he said he's going to do. So, yes, we got to keep praying that direction. Yeah, and and I'm concerned, too. You know, he's really shifted his tone once he won the election. In fact, he in one interview, he actually called the Clintons good people, um, which was kind of alarming to me because, you know, Hillary Clinton's done more to promote abortion than it, perhaps any politician in American history. And to call her a good person is kind of like calling the Nazis uh, in Germany during World War II, good people. But, uh, you know, and, and Trump has done and said other things. For example, with the... Well, uh, before the you get away from wars. that, let, let me make a comment. I, I want to believe the best in him. I want to believe that he was a little hesitant to say too much until he actually takes the office, till he's actually in power. But once he's in power, then we're going to see whether he's really going to stick to it. But go ahead. Yeah, I voted for Donald Trump. I'm hopeful for the best. I want him to succeed. I want him to make the right choices. And But he could have never possibly gotten elected without the support of evangelical Christians, Bible-believing Christians. Absolutely. And he greatly embraced evangelicals. Absolutely. He was running around with them, hugging with them, being shown with them on TV. Matter of fact, there was one guy on them. CNN that said, we just got a white lash. And I laughed and I said, you know, I think what really happened is the Christian, in large degree, that is the white people, decided that they had had enough, and they finally decided to stand up and do something about it. Yeah, the evangelical church surprisingly ended up voting for him. 81% of the vote, evangelical vote went to Donald Trump. And so, you know, it was his support that was hugely instrumental in getting him into the White House, but now is he turning on us? and betraying us. You know, for, for evangelical Christians, there's really three big big issues. There's the big three. You've got abortion, which Donald Trump so far still seems to be promising to nominate pro-life justices. But then there's gay marriage, which he uh, Donald Trump is already saying, hey, I'm not going to fight that battle. And then there's Israel. Now, Donald Trump has come out since the election and said that he would be very open to a peace agreement that would permanently divide the land of Israel. He told the Wall Street Journal that a a peace deal between the Israel and the Palestinians that would create two states would be, quote, the ultimate deal, and that he's very interested in trying to make this happen, quote, for humanity's sake. So that's a great concern because dividing the land of Israel, uh, you know, if we look at the pr prophetic implications of that, we know that whether it's Barack Obama, Donald Trump, or some future president, someday that some future president will be involved in Correct. dividing the land of Israel, and that comes before a whole bunch of other things. In essence, well, 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 let, me, let me jump in here before we get too far from it. Let me just say he did say, though, but it would have to be Israel's choice. Now, if he wants to be a good guy and patting backs and you know shaking hands and if he can help them to get together uh, to to have peace, I'm all for that. To split the land, I'm not all for that. And as long as we do not force Israel to split their land, if Israel splits their land, then that's their choice. But we do not want to have a hand in that because that's how you get the meteor and the splitting of our land. In other words, we split Israel, God splits America. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And we know that once we divide the land of Israel— that God is going to divide our land. Yes. And and so many things happen after the dividing of the land of Israel. You know, you've had people do DVDs who have come in and talked about the coming tsunami, the, the great tsunami that's going to hit the East Coast. Well, that comes, uh, and they've told us, that comes after the dividing of the land of Israel. So, so many of the things we're watching for come after the land of the, uh, the dividing of the land of Israel. And so there's, there, that's something that we're watching for. Now, Donald Trump has said he wants to make Jerusalem the undivided capital of Israel. And of course, that would be any barrier to a Palestinian state because the Palestinians are saying, hey, we're never going to agree to anything unless we can get East Jerusalem as our capital. So if Donald Trump becomes president, even though he's talking about a deal that seems, uh, you know, maybe it, like it might not happen now, however, Stan, we've got this period of time right now, about two months till January 20th, where Barack Obama is still president. And there is an enormous amount of pre pressure on him to do something at the United Nations. In fact, just within the past month, the Wall Street Journal has run an article about this, uh, about uh, saying, hey, uh, Barack Obama could pull off an Israel surprise before the end of his term. Uh, there was an article in the New York Times where the New York Times editorial board, the newspaper itself, actually uh, 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 published an article um, that, that called on Obama 
to, uh, to go to the United Nations and to support a resolution that would permanently divide the land of Israel in, into two states that would set the parameters for, for, for those two states that would give the Palestinians East Jerusalem as their capital and and recognize a Palestinian state for the first time ever. Now, this such a resolution had been brought forward by France. They were at the end of 2015, September 2015, they were going to bring this to the UN Security Council. But at that time, Obama blocked it. He said, not yet, not right now. But now the Obama administration is saying earlier this year, they said it's on the table. We don't know what we're going to do. We might go one way. We might go the other. We don't know what we're going to do. And so they're, they, they, they've been considering it. And now just recently, Barack Obama met with Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu, and Netanyahu asked him, he said, hey, can you promise us to block any resolutions at the UN Security Council that would be anti-Israel before the end of your term? And he was specifically rejected on that point by the Obama administration. And then the, Obama also met with the Palestinians, and he told the Palestinians, wait until after the election for any action at the UN Security Council. So we're watching the, the, the next couple of months because once again, France has this resolution ready to go. And so the big question is, and the only thing standing in the way, because everyone else is ready to go with it, China, Russia, everyone else, the only thing that would block it would be a US veto. So basically the decision is in the hands of Barack Obama, whether Israel's gonna be divided at the UN United Nations within the next couple of months. So we don't know what's going to happen, but if it does happen, that's a really, really ominous sign. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I have said several times on the program, the thing to watch that is sticking the fork in America, just saying we're done, is when America forces Israel to split its, its land. That happens, the meteor hits, the catastrophe, and I mean, we're downhill from there. And a matter of fact, I said the other day in, in our congregation, I said, so which would be worse, a series of 20 to 50 suitcase nukes hitting America all across the land or a meteor? They all agreed the meteor would be worse. I said, okay, the meteor comes if we split America or Israel. We absolutely cannot allow that to happen. Yeah, and so that's why I've described this period of time between the election and January 20th as the danger zone. If we can get to January 20th without the land of Israel being divided, without anything happening to Donald Trump, and Donald Trump peacefully takes office and he starts to you know, go, maybe we have a little bit more time. But if the land of Israel is divided by Barack Obama, and this is actually the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times just reported on this. This is a very, very real possibility. P people may, may not have heard a lot about this, but this is the biggest thing to watch for over these ne this next two months. Absolutely. Period. If it happens, Stan, basically that is kind of the gateway. That's going to open up uh, for basically for all hell to be yep. to break loose in America. Yep, absolutely. That is the most devastating thing can happen. Well, uh, once again, Michael, I appreciate you being on. Want to have you on again tomorrow? And you folks out there, I encourage you to support what we're doing here. Once again, Michael, thank you for being on. Thank you, Stan. If you would like to have Economic Collapse, World War III, and the Death of America, and Regathering of the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel, both normally valued at $50, available today for a gift of just $30 by going to prophecyclub.com. That's both of the Michael Snyder DVDs, normally valued at $50 for a gift of just $30, prophecyclub.com, or 785-266-1112. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. and. Thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. This is Stan Johnson with the Prophecy Club of prophecyclub.com. To simply say that you don't have to be an expert in Bible prophecy to know that we're headed for troublous times. Now, gold and silver is still one of the best ways to preserve your assets for the coming tribulation. The question is, what's best for you in your situation? Gold or silver? Bars or coins? Spot or collectible or maybe even junk coins? Call my new friends at Redwood Gold Group and mention the Prophecy Club and you're going to receive a one ounce brilliant American silver eagle coin, of course, with a minimum purchase. But even more important, they can help you to use gold and silver to prepare for the troubles ahead. Call 800-696-6414. That's 800-696-6414. One more time, 800-696-6414.
800-696-6414. Mention the Prophecy Club when you call. When a nuclear device is detonated, the wind blows the dust settling on everything around you. Then, you breathe, eat, or absorb radioactive iodine, which then kills your thyroid and kills you. A simple fix is to immediately take potassium iodate pills, which flood your thyroid with good iodine, keeping the radioactive iodine out. You need one bottle per person per exposure for everyone from infant to adult. Ten bottles available for a gift of $225 or $25 per bottle at prophecyclub.com. Shelf life from five to eight years, potentially more if you refrigerate or freeze it. That's prophecyclub.com potassium iodate pills. In happy times, a person can go without water for two, maybe even three days in an emergency. The number one killer in most emergency events, surprisingly, is drinking contaminated water. Being able to scoop water out of the puddle and filter it may save your life. I drink all of my water filtered through a Crown Berkey. Now it's a gravity filter filtering down to virus levels. Contaminated water in the top gives you drinking water out the bottom. It's what the missionaries use. There are seven Berkey options from one to eight filters. Now it looks like a large coffee pot, but it can save your life and maybe even the life of your entire neighborhood. Order them at prophecyclub.com and get two to four extra black filters as backup. That's prophecyclub.com or 702-336-7000. 